I bet you weren't expecting that. Today, my dad and I are out to find the best way to knock down butterflies. The um, best thing is to get coarse, dry sand, which spreads and at close range is very effective. But this wet earth sticks together and you're effectively firing a ball shot. My family has a proud heritage of flicking flies with rubber bands and I have inherited a love of this sport. With the plums and the apples out come insects. You have to stalk them. You have to be an accurate shot. And training the retrievers is really tough. Like any hunting, there is quarry great and small. And the greatest quarry in Britain is the cabbage white. So the quarry list is uh, uh, two species. The large or cabbage white. Uh, which is this one, not that one that's found only in the Canary Islands. But there it is. The males have got no spots on the upper surface. The females have got large spots, and they're the ones you should shoot first. And then you've got the small whites, uh, which the one you've got here is the uh, rapi, the, from rape, uh, meaning the, ca the cabbage family. Uh, the one you mustn't mix it with, well, you won't mix it with, is the black-veined white, which is, became extinct in Britain in 1925. Uh, but then the various ones, the green-veined white, you can see here, is a rare one, but it's bad luck if it gets in the way, don't worry. But if it's got conspicuous green on the underside, leave it alone. Yeah, and what about the brimstone? Yes, the females are whitish. And they've got a very different shape of wing, haven't yes. they? Yes, you see these pointed wing tips, skip it. Right. And it is most important not to endanger any more the, the other butterflies. Uh, but uh, do shoot all the small whites and the cabbage whites you can because they are distasteful to birds because the caterpillars eat mustard gas derivative from the mustard or cabbage plants and incorporate it in their tissues and birds won't use them. Oh, I That's see. Why, one of the reasons why they are so common. So we have a plague of cabbage whites, but we're, we're, we're low on the other butterflies. Yes, exactly. Amazing. The cabbage white butterfly has hardly any higher order natural predators. It's up to us to keep the numbers down. So here's our arsenal. A 2-2 rimfire with scope off and dust shot cartridges. A 2-2 air rifle, also with no scope. A catapult with a bowl of sand. And of course, a ball of elastic bands. It's my dad's cabbages, you see, ravaged by this fellow, the cabbage white caterpillar. By the end of August, they have done their dirty work and left behind this stuff, frass, which is a smart word for insect poo. The good news is that they have grown wings and are a sporting prospect. Just uh, on the on the um, calibre, we're using 2-2, um, I mean, effectively dust shot, aren't we, as you, yeah. can, you can see from there. Um, there was the, the alternative is nine millimeter, um, the garden gun shot yes. cartridge, isn't it? That's, uh, that, that's much more destructive. I've used both on small animals. Uh, the, I used the the two two dust shot uh, very successfully in Nigeria in 1962 to collect reptiles for the British Museum, and very little damage was done. Uh, and dust shot with a twelve bore was used by Albert Meek in the end of the last uh, of the uh, 19th century when he was collector for Walter Rothschild and uh, he actually collected the largest butterfly ever recorded uh, with a shotgun. And you'll see the type specimen, the original, is peppered with holes. <laughs> we do a lot of testing. Our simulated cabbage white is, ironically, a leaf. Here's what happens when you shoot it with a 2-2 rimfire with dust shot. Even more ironically, here's the result on a cabbage leaf. I suppose in terms of spread, that's about the size of a butterfly... Absolutely incapacitated, yes. I don't think it's much use shooting them flying because uh, the spread of pattern is, it would be too great. It'd be very yes. satisfactory though, wouldn't it? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> we'll try, we'll try. It turns out it's not only fun, it's exhausting. The difficulty is keeping up with your quarry, keeping the rifle safe and trying to position yourself so you have a safe backstop. might not be a cure for father's Parkinson's, but it's certainly a distraction. <laughs> we find that the Tutu Rimfire works at least three feet away. A good technique for close range work is sand wrapped in loo paper and shot from a Tutu air gun. Cut squares of loo paper, twist sand into it, trim off excess paper and twist it into the breech. It's probably going to be bad for your barrels and worse for the seal at the end of the barrels, but the result is still satisfactory. Thank you. 
and here's the result for us. Successful day. Yes, <laughs> bag of four, anyhow, various runners. You, you said that it's important to get the females, why, why is that? Because they lay the eggs, in that the males usually only mate once. But right. If they can mate more than once, then you've got, if they've mate four times, you've got to kill four males to every female. And, and how many eggs do these lay? About 200. So actually, I mean, in terms of you know, people who say that's a lot of cost for a two-two cartridge to shoot one butterfly, but well, you're getting rid of 200 eggs. If you think that uh, of 200 eggs, if 198 uh, are killed out of those 200, the population remains stable. If 199 are, are killed, the population halves. If 196 are killed, the population doubles. So we're making every one we shoot makes makes some difference. It adds up. Yes. Yes. Good. Um, Can you see this taking off as a, as a significant sport to rival grass shooting? Uh, no, no, no not, not exactly. It's not, it hasn't got quite the thrill of the, the go wet, go wet, go wet. <laughs> but uh, it's, um, it, it's a minor uh, suburban garden uh, afternoon sport. <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs>